Hello and welcome to my first tutorial on using SureCuts a lot or SCAL, Inkscape and your Cricut machine to cut some really cute unique pieces of paper art. I've been working a lot lately on some precious moments and this is my latest work and I'm going to show you today how I made this little lady. First thing you'll need to do is find an uh, image off the internet or a coloring book that you'd like, scan it or download it onto your computer and chances are pretty good it will be either a GIF or a JPEG image and that's great. I've already found one so I'm going to open up my Inkscape software and my GIF is right below there and I can grab her and drop her right on my Inkscape page. I'm going to keep her off the page a little bit because I like to keep this as my work surface and I like to keep that as my original area. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger and zoom in a little bit. Now the first thing I like to do is save my work before I've even done anything. So if I do make an error I can go back and my rule is to save often so it's easy to go back and fix things if you've made an error. So I'm going to go save. I'll give her a real name and she's new. And I'm just going to save that on my desktop for now. Now it will save as an SVG already, but uh, nothing that Shortcuts a lot can recognize. So we do need to do some work with her now. Second thing I always do is I lock the dimensions. This little lock right up here. As you can see right now, it's open. So if I inadvertently grabbed it and yanked her, she would be out of proportion. So I definitely want to lock the proportions of her, and that will lock all the other proportions of my work coming up. So right now, my little girl here, she is an image made of pixels or little dots or squares. And in fact, if I zoom in on her, you'll see that she's made up of squares. This is something that um, your SCAL software cannot recognize and cannot cut. It needs to cut lines. So we are going to change her into something that SCAL can understand. And we've got her selected. We're going to go Path, Trace Bitmap. You'll get a little dialog box pop up. And it's actually already set for us. We are going to use Brightness Cutoff. Um, that works really well with black and white images. Um, not so good perhaps with colors but anything black and white should be uh, good for this one. And uh, the threshold will be fine. I've had to change this occasionally for images that have some gray in them, but we should be good. Let's click on Update. She looks good there. And OK. Now hopefully you'll have noticed that this changed. Our vector image now is on top of our original image. So we're just going to take a hold of her color over. And hopefully you can see already that that has changed. On the left is our original image made of pixels and on the right on the right is our vector image which is made of lines. And already you can see that they are smoother. Put her back on the page. So now I've got a vector image that actually I could cut right now but it's all jumbled up together. We need to break it apart into pieces that we can cut individually. So we're going to change how we see it first of all. View, Display Mode, and Outline. Outline will show us all of the lines within our image. You'll have noticed that our original has disappeared. That is because it's made of pixels and not of lines. And our girl remains. Now she's got some funky lines going on in there. They will disappear, they will not cut, so we're not even going to worry about them for now. She's still all one piece, however. We need to break her apart into smaller pieces. And that is exactly what we do under Path, Break Apart. Now you'll see I've got boxes around a whole bunch of things now. These are all of the pieces that I can take apart. I'm going to click away, and now I can click back and work on individual pieces. I usually like to pull off my back base piece first. So I'm going to get a little bit closer 
and grab it. Oh, I grabbed some arm. I'm going to do edit, undo. And sometimes it's hard to get that back piece out first. If you go zoom closer, sometimes you can grab it a little bit better. There it is. So I'm going to pull it off to the side. And now I can start working on individual pieces within my image. So um, a few shortcuts for your keyboard. If you use the plus and minus, you can zoom a little bit easier and without using your mouse so much on the edges and minus to zoom back out. I think I'll start with her skin. Now she's got a few pieces of skin here, her hands. I'm going to take that, pull it up to the side, and I need to take off her face and eye. Now her face is one piece and I want to cut her eye out in black. So I, I don't need to put a black layer on top of it, I just want to cut it out. So I need to recombine these. So a moment ago we went path, break apart. We're going to do the opposite for her face to include her eye in the cut. We're going to combine. So first of all we need to click on her face and we need to click on her eye. You need to hold down your shift key so that you can select both of those items. So face, shift, click for the eye. I now have both. And I'm going to go path combine. Now I've just got one box and I can move her face out with the eye attached. And I'm going to combine her hand in there as well just so that when I want to move that around later and organize it all moves as one piece. So click on the hand, shift, click on the face, path, combine. And that's one piece. Wonderful. Uh, her dress is in two pieces right now. I'm going to combine those as well. Click on her arm. Click on her dress by holding down the shift key first. And I'm going to go path combine and move them out of the way. Her shoe is one piece and I'll cut it in a different color. Now I've got two little bits of white cuff. Uh, I'm going to click them both kind of hard to get them both. So instead I can just draw a box around them and you'll notice that that has selected them both for me. Path, combine, and move away. Her back bow and her hair bow. I think that I would like those bows to be the same color. So I'm going to pull this one out, click on that bow, shift, click on the other bow, and combine them. And all of the rest that's left is hair. Um, I can try to shift click it all. It's kind of tricky. Or I can just draw the box again. Got it all? Path. Combine. So now it looks like I've broken her all down into pieces that I can cut out in different colors. And now I just need to organize. So I like to keep my black piece up in the top left corner. It's just my way. And I want to make everything kind of fit into a square box, just like my 12 by 12 mat for my Cricut. So my hair, and then my face, shoe, cuffs, and bow. And I do want to make sure I've got a little bit of room in between everything so that I can lay this out on a mat and have everything kind of fit. Wonderful. I'm going to save it before I do anything else. Now the last thing I do when I'm preparing my cuts for other people and my blog is I will label things. If this was just for me and I know what it all is, I would just go ahead now and open up my shortcuts sure software and go to it. But um, for other people, I like to label it all so you know what it is. And I'm going to switch back my view to normal, and you will see that everything is uh, going to cut out just fine. So, one last save, make sure it's all good, and we can open up our Shortcuts sure Lot software.